Military tanks are one of the most important spearheads in real-life battle. Throughout history, tanks have been widely utilized in times of war, such as World War I and II, the Iraq War, and the Arab-Israel War. As a consequence, acquiring tanks is imperative for countries not only to strive in warfare, but also to strengthen their military supremacy. Because of rapid technological advancements in warfare, there are specific concerns on how countries should enhance their warfare equipment, including tanks. The producing of army tanks has gone under significant transformations in history. But have you ever wondered what military tanks are made of and how they evolve throughout time? Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Military TV. In today's episode, we're going to discuss what military tanks are made of and the reason behind it. If you're eager to learn more, don't go anywhere and stay tuned. Most of the body of military vehicles are made with particular armor. The main purpose of this is to enhance the resilience of the vehicles in times of combat. The same thing goes for the armor covering army tanks. In majority, tank armor is made of metal or steel, but with advancement of warfare settings, different mixtures of steel have also been introduced to produce the tank armor. Steel armor plate was the earliest kind of armor. It is also widely known as rolled homogeneous armor, RHA. In contrast to layered or cemented armor, this type of armor is comprised of a single steel composition that has been hot rolled to improve its material properties. During World War II, the Germans pioneered the use of face-hardened steel, and the Soviets increased its protection with sloped armor technology. With the introduction of shaped charged warheads during World War II, homogeneous steel armor became obsolete. As evidenced by the anti-tank Panzerfaust and bazooka infantry-carried weapons, which were effective despite some early success with spaced armor. On the other hand, another development of producing tank armor was being conducted by the British. Cobam armor, or more broadly composite armor, was developed by British tank researchers, and it incorporated ceramics and polymers in a resin matrix between steel plates, providing good protection against high-explosive anti-tank or heat projectiles. Because of the rapid development of composite armor, RHA has been largely superseded due to a reduction in effectiveness against new weapons, primarily shaped charges and improved kinetic energy penetrators. From the introduction of tanks until the Second World War, tank armor has been continuously thickened to withstand the growing size and potency of anti-tank weaponry. A tank with enough armor could withstand the most powerful anti-tank weaponry at the time. Nowadays, many modern tanks have large hollow areas, boxes on the turret and hull fronts, as well as turret sides where special armor is installed. This armor can be made of various alloys, aluminum or steel type, plastics, alloys with rubber, bolt plate, ceramics, alumina, silicon or boron carbide, depleted uranium or lithium grease in various geometric layouts and combinations. This leads to a question of why the manufacturing of tank armor needs to evolve throughout time. The primary reason is because the transformation of modern warfare and advancement of technology has made it possible for the development of anti-tank weaponry meant to penetrate even the thickest military tank's armor. Hence, it has been critically necessary to also modernize tanks from single steel composition to different kinds of composite armor. All of these efforts are fundamental to not only increase the durability of the tanks in times of conflict, but more importantly to protect the military officers who operate the tanks. That's all for today. Thank you for your time and see you on the next episode.